Okay, now that you have Avita installed, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components of Avita. So I'm starting at the base directory here, so as usual we want to go into the Avita source, C build, and work directory. And if we do an ls in there, we'll see all of these files. We have some executable files, which are green. We have a data directory, which is a dark blue there. Uh, and then we have all these configuration files and organism files um, that are white. And so let's just go ahead and go through a few of these, um, and I'll show you how to work with them. Uh, so first and foremost, we have the Avita configuration file, which is this avita.cfg. So I'm going to open this up with Emacs. You can use whatever editor you're comfortable with. And if you go in there, you'll see all these fields um, listed in all caps. So for example, we have this version ID or verbosity, random seed, so on and so forth. Um, these are basically all of the settings for Avita. Um, and you can look up in the documentation to see what these various settings do. The only setting that you'll really be changing for this experiment is this copy mute prob and you'll be changing it to 0 .0025 instead of 75. So I'll show you how to do that right there and then we can save. Okay, um, let's see the next one that we, that we would be working with here um, is the environment.cfg file and so this specifies the resources and the various tasks that the digital organisms can perform uh, to receive energy, to reproduce more. So you see these are the standard nine logic tasks um, that, the, that the digital organism can perform. And then, uh, and, the, and then you can assign various values for them performing this. So you can see NOT and NAND are some of the simplest instructions that they can perform. So they receive only a value of, of one for performing that. Um, and then and and or not are the second most compl um, complex instructions and so they get a value of two for performing that and so on and so forth. Um, and so you'll be changing these values uh, in part of the homework. So I thought I'd take note of this file. Another file that you could be working with is the is the events.cfg file. And so in here um, you can specify, for example, um, what organisms you want to start the population with. So there's a default organism called defaultheads.org, um, but there's also various other um, digital organisms that you can seed the population with. Uh, and then you can also set up events here, and so that's the the U, and then this specifies the um, the start and end time that you want to. Uh, that you want to have these events happen and then this is every every number of updates this event happens and so usually these are events these events in here are events that everyone includes in their Avita runs and these are just basically saving data like um, population averages um, information about the dominant digital organism the population so on and so forth and so for these experiments you can just leave these alone in future digital evolution experiments, you may want to play around with this because um, saving all of this data can fill up a lot of space. Another configuration file you can work with is this inset-head configuration file. And this is basically where you can specify all of the various instructions that the Avidians can work with. And so you see um, they can do adds, they can do subtractions or nands, and various other things. For the most part, uh, you really won't be messing around with this very much in Avita, um, but it's good to know that you can actually change the instructions that are available to, to the digital organisms. Okay, and then finally we can take a look at the default organism uh, that we're seeding the population with, and that's in this default-heads.org file. And what you see is, is a very simple organism that we're actually uh, seeding the population with. Um, it does a few instructions at the beginning and then there's a whole bunch of NOPs and so this is basically the organism just doing nothing um, for a lot of its lifetime and, and these are just basically um, empty instructions for evolution to work with. Um, so and eventually these, are, these instructions are actually changed to more useful instructions like performing NANs um, and then building onto more complex uh, uh, logic tasks. 
Uh, and what we'll see if we scroll all the way to the end of this is this is actually um, the copy loop. And so um, these are these are the the important the most important instructions for a digital organism because these are the the instructions that actually cause it to copy itself and reproduce. And so usually if a mutation happens here, um, the digital organism is pretty much a goner. Uh, it, it won't be able to reproduce anymore. So that's about it for the configuration files. Um, you'll notice we have the two green files in here, Avita and Avita Viewer. Uh, Avita is basically just what we call a headless version of Avita. So if we run it, um, it basically just spits out some information every update about you know what the average generation that's gone through the average fitness and however many organisms are alive right now um, and so this is useful because it it runs much faster than if it were to generate graphics and so this is the mode that most people doing uh, research with the Vita use because they don't really want to generate graphics for a hundred of a hundred runs at a time they want it to just run as quickly as possible so that's this mode. You can, you can exit out of this by doing control C and that will kill it. Um, and then let's LS again. And then now we can also run Avita dash viewer. And so this gives a much more, uh, inter this gives an interactive display. And so you'll notice this actually runs a, a tiny bit slower, but actually it still runs pretty fast. Um, and you can actually watch the, the Avita population evolving. So if you hit your up and down keys, you can actually move across the grid and see them evolving. Um, and these colors here represent uh, a whole bunch of genotypes uh, that, are, that are basically um, the same genotype. And so this is maybe uh, a, sh a lot of these, as you can see, are fairly short lived um, and they, they get um, outcompeted fairly quickly. Um, but eventually, some of them will evolve to do tasks, like this red one over here probably evolved to do a task, and so now it's actually um, staying on the grid for a while. Whoop, and I say that, and as, as soon as I say that, it, it goes away. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, and then there's various other, um, there's ver various other screens here that we can take a look at. So if you want to pause the simulation, you can hit P, and you'll notice that it stopped. So this is if something interesting is happening right, happening right now and you want to take a closer look at it, you can just hit P. Uh, if you hit P again, it will keep running. Uh, and then we have various other screens here. So if you hit S, it will go into the stats screen. And so this shows all kinds of information about, um, about the population right now. Um, the most important one uh, for the homework is down here on the bottom left which shows the number of tasks that are being performed. So we can see that uh, a bunch of NANs are being performed, a bunch of OR NOTs and ORs, and also NORs are being performed. And so you can actually watch this over evolutionary time as the updates pass by, and you'll, and you'll watch the digital organisms evolve to do more and more tasks. Um, you can also look at, um, you, if you hit H, you can see uh, the status of some of the dominant organisms in the population and how abundant they are. Um, so this can be a little fun to watch as, uh, as certain organisms are outcompeted. So you can actually watch evolution happening here. Um, and then you can, if you hit M again, you can go back to the map screen. And so this is where the real action is happening. Okay, so if you hit Q, this will exit out of the Avita viewer. Um, and so all the while uh, that Avita viewer program was running, it was actually saving information into this data folder. So if we do ls data, you'll see that there's all these files in there now. And so let's go ahead and take a, a look at a couple of those files. So if we change directory into data, do an ls there again, um, there's various files that it saves. So if you remember that events file that I mentioned, um, that these are all of the um, saved data events uh, that are occurring here. So we, we're saving again population averages, um, information about the resource usage and task performance. Uh, the files that are interesting to us here um, will be the average.dat file. And so this stores information like the update number. Uh, so it, it takes a snapshot of the population every hundred updates, as you can see. Uh, and then it'll also give information about the um, average population fitness. And so I make note of that because that's something that you'll be plotting in the homework. 
uh, and then and then a whole bunch of other parameters as well um, that you can look up in the Avita documentation if you're interested. Um, another file that's interesting to us here is the tasks.dat file. So if we open that up, um, this actually lists again every hundred updates um, what tasks are actually being performed. And so you can see as you scroll down through the file here, you can watch um, the first task to be formed um, to be performed was at update 800, and that is the NAN task. And so you can actually watch as as the population evolves these various tasks. And again, I take note of that because this is another thing you'll be plotting in the homework. Um, there's a whole bunch of other files, such as the um, detail files. Let's just open that up real quick. Detail 0spop And th these are basically just snapshots. Actually, that one's not very interesting. Let's take a look at, say, detail 1000. And this takes a snapshot of every single digital organism currently in the population. And this is actually the digital organism's DNA right here. Um, so that's, that's how it's represented in Avita. And so we can scroll through all these, and there's a whole bunch of them. There's about 3,000 of them in the population at this point. Um, so this is also useful if you want to look at um, specific digital organisms in the population at various time points. Um, so that's about it for the major components of Avita. Um, you can look up the rest that I didn't co cover in the Avita documentation. Um, which I highly recommend if you ever plan to use Avita for your research.